Cathedrals are an important part of the religious world. Works of art that unite cultural history and architecture in a remarkable way. The Stephansdom in Vienna. One of the most beautiful Gothic cathedrals in the world. It's one of the most cherished buildings in Austria. The oldest sections of the facade, such as the Heidenturmer and Riesentor, are of Romanic origin. They date back to 1260 AD and the reign of King Ottokar II of Bohemia. But it was left to a member of the Habsburger royal family to complete the construction of the cathedral. Rudolf the Donor made the Stephansdom independent from the Passau bishops and laid its foundation stone. Although he did not live to see the completion of this Gothic cathedral, it was not long until a preliminary stage of the subsequent diocese came into being. In 1433, construction of the highest tower was completed. Seven years later, a mighty larch wood roof framework was added. Friedrich III finally realized the original ecclesiastical and political aims and dreams of his great uncle, Rudolf the Dono. For the past 800 years, the building has survived fire, siege and war. But a devastating fire during World War II caused extensive damage. Almost half the church was destroyed. After a labor of love that lasted for seven years, the mighty doors of the Stephansdom were finally reopened. The Gothic splendor of the cathedral is here for all to see. Its architectural and artistic treasures that date back to the Middle Ages are a priceless heritage for future generations. The importance of this building was contained not only in its magnificent works of art, such as this side altar, but from 1469 it played an increasingly important role and thus became a bishop and cathedral church, a true artistic masterpiece created by numerous artists. By creating this outstanding pulpit, cathedral master builder Anton Pilgram made himself immortal as a Fenstergucker. Throughout its history, the structure of the cathedral has changed many times. There are no longer any signs of the small, former parish church that once existed here. The dark and mysterious catacombs are located beneath the Stephansdom. Up until 1783, the underground passages were also used for the burial of Vienna's commoners. Most visitors feel somewhat relieved when leaving the catacombs. Having survived all the tumult of past centuries, this unique building with its proud, tall towers that rise above Vienna has stood the test of time. Destroyed during the Second World War, the Pomerin bell was later replaced with a new bell of the same name. Today it only rings on certain public holidays. There is a panoramic view of Vienna from the top of the North Tower, a 
and also the 130 metre high South Tower. Saint-Michel. With its historic buildings, the 80-meter-high granite mound in France's Normandy is like something from a fairy tale. Powerful fortifications surround the small town and the abbey at the top of the rock, the remains of Mont Saint-Michel's dramatic past. Due to its unique location and architectural splendor, this picturesque village is often referred to as the wonder of the Occident. However, the island's original buildings were quite modest. In the 8th century, Bishop Aubert d'Avranche built a basilica here. According to legend, the Archangel Michael appeared in the bishop's dreams and ordered the construction of a pilgrim's church in 708 AD. Mont Saint-Michel soon developed into a much visited pilgrimage destination that also became important for the village below the abbey. The conquest of Normandy by French King Philippe Auguste led to the construction of several Gothic buildings in the 13th century. Meanwhile, the great Romanic Abbey Church of Mont Saint-Michel remained almost unchanged. However, its construction turned out to be an immense architectural and technical challenge. The walls of the buildings collapsed several times during their construction. Finally, the Romanic church was completed in the middle of the 12th century. Thus, monastic life flourished. The refectorium impresses due to its unique atmosphere and fascinating dimensions. The cloister is also worth a closer look. In 1421, during the Hundred Years' War, the old Romanic church choir area was destroyed. Reconstruction in the Gothic style took place some 25 years later. The repairs, extensions and decoration of the Benedictine Abbey took several centuries. So a unique monument to the history of French construction developed that united various talented artists and architects of different epochs. However, in 1791, monastic life here came to a sudden and violent end. The revolutionary French troops drove the Benedictine monks from the area. The parish church of Mont Saint-Michel that dates back to the 10th century was also affected by these dramatic social and political events. The abbey was used as a prison until the Second Empire. From 1874, the historical and cultural value of this rock on the Watton Sea was gradually rediscovered.
as if to highlight its special significance and situated in the small Finnish town of Keremaki, the Kerimain Kirko proudly rises into the sky. Here, close to the fascinating lake district of the Savonlina region, the inhabitants of Kerimaki wanted to have a church that was a little different. Forty-five meters long and forty-two meters wide, Kerimaki Church is the largest timber-built Christian church in the world. There has been much speculation with regard to the enormous dimensions of this church that measures 37 meters to its roof. It was thought by many that its over-generous proportions were the result of an architectural miscalculation. One theory in particular was popular for some time. It was believed that the farmers of the region, who had played an important role in the construction of the church, had wrongly interpreted the building plans. However, this proved to be untrue. With a total of 20 registers, the organ was produced by a famous Finnish organ company in Kangasala and first came into use in 1894. It really is a fascinating place. Its pews add up to a total length of 1670 meters. The former minister of the parish was responsible for the dimensions of this timber-built church. It can accommodate a congregation of 3,000. Seville Cathedral, the Catedral de Santa Maria de la Seda, is the most important church in the Andalusian metropolis. This magnificent building is the largest Gothic cathedral and also the third largest Christian church in the world. It replaced the former Islamic Seville Mosque that was built by the Almohades in 1198. During the Christians' recapture of Spain and Andalusia, Seville was conquered around the middle of the 12th century by Ferdinand III. Almohades bequeathed an amazing heritage to Seville. In the early years that followed victory over the Moors, the mosque was transformed into a church. Larger architectural transformations followed at the beginning of the 15th century, when the conquerors of Seville created the ambitious plan to build an exceptionally beautiful cathedral here. The design of its interior highlights the symbolic nature of this great cathedral. Several great artists also made their mark here. The cathedral's most prized treasure is the retabel of the high altar that demonstrates the gradual transition from the Gothic period to that of the Renaissance. chapels not only have great aesthetic appeal, 
but are also of historical artistic value as they contain a number of sacred works of art that are truly remarkable. Even today, the spacious geometry and symmetry of the building has a deeply impressive and moving effect on the cathedral's visitors. The construction of Seville Cathedral was designed to create an unmistakable symbol of Christian glory and power, a building with much political significance. The city's wealth is not only reflected in the Renaissance baptismal font within the Baptisterium, the St. Antonius Chapel, but also in the cathedral's other remarkable chapels. The richly decorated Sacristia Mel was created during the first half of the 16th century and contains several extremely valuable works of art. The cathedral also possesses a famous tomb, for this is the final resting place of the legendary discoverer of America, Christopher Columbus. The idyllic inner courtyard, the Patio de los Naranjos, transports those who come here to the days of the Almohades. From the bell gallery that is around 70 meters high, visitors can enjoy a splendid view of the cathedral below, as well as the unique courtyard and the endless ocean of rooftops in the old part of Seville. The shining white basilica of the Sacre Coeur towers above Montmartre and across the famous Parisian art district of the same name. It is located on a hill that is 30 meters high and provides a good view of Paris and the River Seine and thus reveals both the modern and traditional faces of this remarkable city. The church dates back to two important historical events of the 19th century, the Franco-Prussian War and the Paris Commune. In 1870, at the onset of these two events, two businessmen, Le Gentil and De Fleury, were determined to build a basilica should Paris be spared from the Prussians. Following the war and the ensuing revolution that began in Montmartre, the church was designated as a national place of penance. In addition, Romanic and various Gothic elements were also incorporated within its external design and thus play a significant part in its appearance. Numerous private gifts and generous public donations meant that the church could be built in a relatively short space of time. The dominant main dome above the high tambour and four small cupolas are of oriental influence. From the top of the Sacré-Cœur, there is an extensive view across the French capital. The magnificent basilica on top of Montmartre Hill can be seen from several miles away. It is synonymous with Paris.
In the mountain area close to Palermo is the picturesque town of Monreal, a townscape that for more than 800 years has been dominated by a single building. Monreal Cathedral was built due to a struggle for power between the Bishop of Palermo and the Norman King William II. The king believed that the bishop too strongly represented the interests of the Pope. So in 1172, William II ordered a new cathedral to be built. Architecturally, the Monreal Cathedral possesses a wonderful harmony of styles, including those of Norman, Romanic and Arabian. With the building of the cathedral and the elevation of the city to an archbishopric, William II created a worthy competitor to Palermo Cathedral. Of the original main façade, two mighty square towers have survived. But the pride of this cathedral is its interior. Not only due to its massive dimensions that measure 102 by 40 meters, but also for its unique architecture and ornate decoration. Christ Pantocrator, the Almighty and Judge of the World. The walls contain large and beautiful mosaics with well-known passages taken from the Bible. Excerpts from both the Old and New Testaments. The ceiling also contains an array of beautiful illustrations. All this makes it quite amazing that the cathedral was constructed in only eight years. However, the Chapel of the Crucified does not date back to Norman times. It's a perfect masterpiece of Sicilian High Baroque. The best craftsmen and artists in Palermo were involved in the creation of this chapel. Its wings feature the statues of the four greatest prophets. At one time, the cathedral's treasures were even more overwhelming. But over the course of time, the church became impoverished and several of its precious objects were sold. The breviary of the Order of St. John of Jerusalem has survived to the present day. Each corner of the cathedral has a story to tell. The mosaics in the nave illustrate the creation of earth and the evolution of man. However, the cloister of the Benedictine monastery on the southern side of the cathedral was most likely created by five master craftsmen who were originally from Provence. Each of its 228 beautiful double marble columns was individually designed combination of sculptures and mosaics within the cathedral. Here the architecture, paintings and sculptures have combined with Western European, Byzantine and Oriental influences to form a harmonious whole. The Norman Cathedral and its adjacent cloister are two historic jewels that give a special significance to the small town of Montreal. St. Stephen's Church stands tall and majestic, extending high over the rooftops of Budapest 
capital of Hungary. The people of Budapest simply call this church the Basilica. The construction of the Basilica began in 1851, but following several alterations and setbacks, it was completed in 1905. Its eventual design was the work of three generations of architects. During its construction, the church encountered many disasters. In 1868, its entire dome collapsed. Amazingly, no one was hurt when the dome collapsed. The grandiose interior of St. Stephen's Church is decorated with many gold plates and an array of highly decorative wall paintings. To the Hungarians, its sumptuous decor and generous use of gold was most appropriate, due to the fact that this church was dedicated to a famous national hero, the country's first Christian monarch, King Stephen I. Being Budapest's largest church, the Basilica can accommodate a congregation of 8,500. A treasure chest of splendor, it contains several wonderful monuments, as well as many religious paintings. The embalmed hand of King Stephen I is one of the most precious relics. It's located in the chapel of the Holy Right Hand. The royal hand has remained intact for over a thousand years. It has been in the Basilica since 1971 and is of great symbolic significance to the Hungarian people. Due to its long gestation period, the Basilica consists of three different architectural styles. Classic, Neo-Renaissance and Baroque. The impressive church organ and grand interior are often used for classical and religious concerts. Several tons of granite support the weight of the magnificent shining dome of the fascinating St. Stephen's Basilica. Ornate paintings cover the ceilings and decorate the spacious interior. The designs and creative ideas of the famous Hungarian architect Miklós Ibel dominate the country's second largest church. Hundreds of steps lead high up into the bell towers. The tower on the right houses the largest bell in the world, which weighs nine tons. During the Second World War, one of the bells that was dedicated to St. Stephen was removed. It was melted down and used in the manufacture of military weapons. But in 1990, Christians from the German city of Passau donated a bell to the church in order to thank Hungary for the opening of the borders that made the escape of thousands of inhabitants of the German Democratic Republic possible. Today, each of the church's bells ring out once again in all their glory. The magnificent St. Stephen's Church is one of the many sightseeing attractions in the picturesque city of Budapest on the River Danube. The beautiful main facade of the Catedral Santiago de Compostela rises proudly into the sky. 
the final destination of a legendary medieval pilgrimage route. For more than 1,200 years, the marvelous buildings of the Old Town, as well as this striking cathedral, have attracted visitors from all over the world. During the Middle Ages, the town enjoyed great prominence. In addition to Jerusalem and Rome, Santiago de Compostela was the third most important Christian pilgrimage destination. Its beautiful main facade combines various decorative and architectural elements that are to be found among the Pilgrim's Way, the Camino de Santiago. Santiago's fame originates from an old belief. Legend has it that in 813 AD, the remains of St. James the Apostle were discovered on the site of today's cathedral. Following the discovery of the grave, the king of Asturias and Galicia, Alphonse II, ordered the construction of the first chapel. but nothing remains of the original clay-built church. In 997 AD, the Moorish army destroyed the Christian building. The cathedral of today is a splendid building. Shortly after the expulsion of the North African invaders, reconstruction of the cathedral began. Under the rule of Bishop Diego Salmirez, both the town and its Catholic Church enjoyed much prosperity, and the diocese became an archbishopric. Unlike the architectural transformation of its external facade, most of the cathedral's interior has retained its original form. The church's main nave and altar, with its precious and exquisite decoration, are a remarkable religious work of art. While strolling through the imposing interior of the cathedral, which leads to the choir, there are several fascinating works that date back to numerous epochs. In 1074, construction of Spain's first medieval cathedral began. Its construction took more than a century. Its architecture was inspired by various classical pilgrim basilicas of the time. The cathedral's typical romantic structure and ground plan have remained intact to the present day. Only its external appearance has changed in rich Baroque style. Santiago de Compostela is of special significance and is one of the most important buildings in the Christian world. In the course of time, the sanctuary was gradually extended and improved in the design of the Spanish late Baroque of the 18th century. Santiago de Compostela. Even today, the town has retained all of its magic, its cultural appeal, and its deep religious significance.
In the heart of Finland's capital city of Helsinki is the proud and majestic Uspensky Cathedral, the largest Orthodox church in Western Europe. This red brick building is an impressive architectural symbol of the relationship that once existed between Finland and the Russian Empire. Famous Russian church architect Alexei Gonostayev was responsible for the design of this majestic structure. The altar is situated behind the iconostasi, a large wall of religious art. Following orthodox tradition, the altar points towards the east. The iconostasi divides the altar room from the rest of the church. The Christus icon is located in its center. Icons are not restricted to the Eastern Church. They're also a symbol of the Christian doctrine. According to Orthodox belief, it is not the colorful wooden icons that are worshipped, but what they depict. This three-leveled work of art is the central focal point of Ospensky Cathedral's richly decorated interior. It is sometimes said that the Orthodox doctrine was the result of Finland's association with the Russian Empire. But that is wrong. With the division of the church into an eastern and western church in 1054, the people of Finland soon became engaged in religious conflict. With the first enforced conversions in the 17th century, the struggle between the two Christian doctrines reached its sad climax. However, the Finns subsequently began to develop their own national belief. Uspensky Cathedral is one of the most important buildings in Helsinki and is also a magnificent symbol of Finland's dramatic religious history. The picturesque old town of Porto on the Rio Duro. The historic origins of Se Cathedral date back to the 12th century when the first church was established on a raised area of granite rock. The decision to construct the building on this location was probably more for strategic rather than aesthetic reasons. The azuleos, small, blue, elaborately painted tiles, decorate the surrounding walls of the tower, as well as the upper part of the cloister. Today, the original Mooresque arts and crafts are still a popular ornamental feature. Four arcades that are supported by columns that contain a broken frieze form the lower part of the cloister, which was recently restored and dates back to the 14th century. During this time, Porto developed into a great and influential trading town, 
its citizens enjoying newfound wealth and prosperity. The cloister next to the sacristy was built in Gothic style. It's regarded as being a typical example of the elegant, yet at the same time striking appearance of Portuguese architecture. The walls of the lower section of the Gothic cloister are also decorated with fine azuleos. They depict various religious scenes of Mary Magdalene's life. The blue square tiles made of glazed clay are used throughout Portugal. They are also popular due to their cooling properties. Today the precious treasures and religious works of art that stem from the rich past of Zé Catedral are on display in the church's museum. The museum's exhibits include beautiful examples of historic Portuguese religious art that covers a period of more than 600 years. The lavishly furnished cathedral, which soon after its completion became an important social meeting place, with many of its activities revolving around politics. Thus, on February the 2nd, 1387, the solemn and expedient marriage of King Yao I and the Englishwoman Philippa of Lancaster took place. The final sunbeams of the day illuminate the Se Cathedral and all of Porto's ancient buildings in the light of a glorious past. On the south bank of the Ile de la Cité in Paris is a world-famous example of French Gothic architecture, the mother church of the nation, Notre Dame. It's believed that the origin of the richly decorated Episcopal Cathedral dates back to the time of Bishop Maurice de Sully in 1163. But the majority of the cathedral's present-day architecture, with its strange and fantastic creatures of ancient mythology, such as the chimeras, was designed in the 19th century. The menacing creatures are seated on the balustrades of the cathedral high above the ground. Construction of Notre Dame in the 12th century was extremely complex and demanding. Indeed, it continued well into the 14th century. In 1345, most of the work on this impressive cathedral and its Gothic portal, which is regarded as one of the most beautiful in the world, was finally completed. Also, the remarkable and beautifully designed rose windows in the transept are particularly noteworthy. The demon-like chimeras in the upper regions of the church peer down almost mockingly at the Christian sculpture and decor below. The church owes much of its fame to the famous French author Victor Hugo and his book The Hunchback of Notre Dame, a great classic of French literature. Over the years, this literary masterpiece has been synonymous with this remarkable cathedral in the heart of Paris.
For the French nation, the historic importance of this impressive monument is inestimable. It was from here that a crusade once embarked. It was a place of coronations and royal wedding ceremonies, including that of King Francis II and Mary Stuart in the 16th century. In 1804, Napoleon Bonaparte was crowned emperor here by Pope Pius VII on this famous island in the River Seine, the Ile de la Cité. Finally, Jeanne d'Arc also found her final resting place within the interior of the cathedral. Beautiful, majestic, and awe-inspiring, St. Peter's Basilica towers over St. Peter's Square in Rome, each a unique architectural and artistic masterpiece. The second largest church in Christianity is situated in the smallest country in the world, the Vatican, for centuries the home and official residence of the papacy. Designed by Bernini, St. Peter's Square is flanked by a number of colonnades. 140 statues of saints, each around three meters high, are situated on the beautiful balustrade that in turn is located on two semicircular arms. The Bernini colonnade consists of 284 13 meter high Doric columns and pillars that consist of travertina. Around the year 67 AD, the Apostle St. Peter was crucified in Rome during the reign of the Emperor Nero. The tomb of St. Peter became an increasingly important place of pilgrimage. Despite the fact that the persecution of the Christians ended far later under Emperor Constantine, It was Constantine who, in 324 AD, ordered the building of the first Christian basilica above the grave of St. Peter. The basilica survived for almost 1100 years until its condition deteriorated to such an extent that a new building was required. The controversial decision to pull down large parts of the basilica was the idea of Pope Julius II. The subsequent construction of the Church of St. Peter soon developed into one of the most ambitious projects of the 16th century. Following the death of Pope Julius II, construction continued under many subsequent popes and several famous architects, plus renowned artists such as Raphael and Michelangelo. The design of the interior of the church is still a breathtaking sight, and everywhere there are paintings, sculptures and mosaics. The Vatican is not only the center of the Catholic Church, it also boasts more than half a million priceless books and manuscripts and contains the largest art collection in the world. Each year, the cathedral attracts millions of tourists and pilgrims from all over the world. The legendary Pieta by Michelangelo, made of the most precious Carrara marble, is one of the cathedral's most interesting works of arts. The five magnificently decorated entrance portals also deserve a closer look.
But following the completion of St. Peter's Basilica, it was necessary to have a new gathering place for the faithful. St. Peter's Square. The beauty and religious significance of Rome's St. Peter's Basilica is unique in the world. Throughout the ages, these fascinating cathedrals have focused the minds of the faithful and have each, in their own way, become immortal.